Teresa. I'll ask you the same thing. Teresa. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, on filling the spots on your uh, on your staff, uh, offensive coordinator, have you talked to some guys yet, and how's that process coming? I would say the process is going well. I'm excited with with the, the numerous people that we've been able to meet and interview. That's been the you know, the bulk of my time has been doing that since the season ended, and um, you know, excited where it's at, excited the ideas, and, and you know, nothing really new to report. Um, but we've had, you know, there's some spots that we have to fill. When you hear Rand talk about collaboration being so open to that communication and being in lockstep, I mean, that's got to be reassuring for you moving forward. Yeah, there was never any doubt in my mind. I mean, our job is to, to get it right. Our job is to hire great people, the best people, what they do, find the best and most diverse staffs, uh, let them do their job, manage them, lead them, uh, push them. You know, that's what we have to do. You know, he has to do that in personnel, and I have to do that in coaching, and then we have to bring it all together, and, and then we have to do what's best for the team. From your perspective, what, what is it about Rand that's going to make this collaboration work? Well, I just believe in, in his history. I believe in where he's been in his pedigree and uh, you know, what he believes about making relationships. You know, to, it's, the coach's job is to teach, develop, and inspire through making a connection with the player, uh, and that can't change whether it's where we bring him in or making connections with his staff or my staff, you know, it's, it's different. You know, it's different than where it was 20 years ago when he played or when I played. I mean, it just is. Paul, it's, I know it's January and you're still going to interrupt me, but I'm just trying to answer the question <laughs> that it's that we have to be able to get to know these guys and what they go through and the people in our building. And when you stop and you ask how somebody's doing, you, you have to be willing to stand there and listen to them instead of just walking by. And I, that goes, that starts with me. And remembering that, not just walking by and say, hey, how you doing today? It's like, no, if you're going to willing to answer the question, stop, stand there, and figure out how you can help somebody. Go ahead, Paul. I apologize. That's okay. You don't have to apologize. Um, not from a power dynamic, from a division of work dynamic, in, in not having somebody that's leader of football operations, Rand mentioned the kitchen, kitchen staff. Yeah. If something like that comes up, isn't it cleaner to have somebody that, like, We're, you, yep. you have to have I'm, I'm to confident. I am. I am very confident. Uh, and, and again, I don't want to speak for Amy or Kenneth or Barkley or Burke, but but we have people in place, and we've hired the right people to to make sure that those organizations or departments um, are functioning to help the football team, the players. Like that's what everybody's job here. His job, my job, Stretch's job, uh, Chris's job. You know, Johnny's job, Joey, every single person here is to do what's best for the football players so that they can help us win football games. Mike, how open are you to uh, changing the offensive scheme? Well, I think we change things every year. And, and, and I, wanna, I want coaches and people, and we had this conversation this morning, of, that are versatile, that have multiplicity, that can be, that can adjust, that aren't just married to one specific way of looking at a player, of coaching a scheme coaching a technique. You know, there's a bunch of different ways to rush the, rush the passer. It's a bunch of different ways to, to block or to run a route. Um, outside zone, inside zone. Like, the whole idea is to have people that, you know, are, can function and excel in doing different things. And I, 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 I want to do that offensively. I absolutely do. I want to do whatever is best for our football players and they can, they can excel. The, the young players that we saw this year, you know, finding ways to help them make a jump, and then you know, the veteran players that we'll have back. What are the things that you're looking for, the qualities you're looking for in your next offensive coordinator? Well, I mean, we, again, if you hear me talk, it's about guys that can lead and make a connection with their coaching staff, with the players uh, that, have, that have some level of multiplicity that can, you know, figure out ways to, to run the football, whether you run and you, and you use the quarterback or whether it's an outside zone, whether it's gap scheme. Like, I got it. You know, I mean, I've sat in a lot of different meetings. I, I got all the different schemes. I want to make sure that, you know, we, we find a few that we like, uh, would hope that we can teach the players and that they can understand and they can have the confidence to go and do their job. You know, somebody that, you know, we, we got to score some points. You know, we, we've been efficient. One thing we have been in is around here is, is efficient in the red zone. You know, that, that hasn't changed no matter who was, was running the offense. Um, 
but we just have to get down there more often. You've heard me say that. So if we can continue to be efficient and, and looking at how we have created those game plans uh, and what we've done to prepare in that regard, if you know, finding a way to translate that to, to our first and second down and um, you know, still staying efficient in red zone and scoring points and, and protecting the quarterback. Why'd you keep Craig Ackerman on the staff with the special teams issues this season? Well, I think you, what, what special teams, what are you talking about? Let's look, look, look at these objectively and let's talk about it. All the punts that were returned throughout the course of the year, leading the league in those punts. The punts that were returned for yes. against so, us or ones we against. returned? Well, both, honestly. Well, we were third in the league in the net punting. We were third. Third in the National Football League in net punting. Third, 44 yards. Okay. So, again, I'm happy to have this conversation, but our punter just – set a record and again there were some long flat punts that got returned but when you look at it third in the national football league in net punting with the number of players that were on our punt team and the number of gunners we went through is pretty good okay. yep we, we got to find guys Rand, go find some returners that don't drop the ball <laughs> because i'm with you we we went through a lot of returners we we, we you have a vision of guys okay I'm, you asked me a question, I'm going to try to answer it. <laughs> we, we're going to catch punts until our hands bleed or they, they get calloused, okay? But we had a vision, okay, that we draft Kyle. We saw what he did early in the season. First game, huge punt return. Man, we got and, – and then, and, then, and then he muffs one, okay? And then he gets injured and he's practicing and he's practicing. And then we go to Buffalo – Right, and whatever it was, it was Robert and Amani. Like, I can relive this, I would rather not. We gotta find somebody that we can trust back there. But I can't put that on Craig Aukerman when I see the amount of time that we spend catching punts. Like, we go through more jugs machines than anybody. Okay, I get it, we gotta, we gotta make sure we take care of the ball. But I can't say that that's Craig Aukerman when I'm evaluating everything that we're doing. Like, when you look at more Warren Miners fast, physical, diverse, these are all things you talk mm -hmm. about. How important is that when you bring in Rand? In, in well, I, I think it's, you know, I mean, I want to hear about, you know, these guys, and, and we both love, the majority of people can kind of figure out the, the, the top players are the top players, like top 100. But where I, all my excitement comes in is the seventh round, a late draft. Like, we've had some really good, you know, we all have. And where his experience or where I've been is trying to, you know, we see it the exact same way. Let the scout and the position coach come together and act like Mike and Rand throughout the draft. They can go. They can fit their board. Here's our undrafted guys. If they pass through the draft, hey, Rand, here's how you can help us. Vrabes, here's how you can help us, and we will support that. That was part of our conversation, and that's where we can hopefully continue to find and strengthen the, the back end of our roster or special teams, or you end up finding a guy that – starts for you or, or plays, but, you know, that's, you know, that's where I think you can really come together and you can say, hey, this is what we saw in George Kittle. You know, a lot of other people passed on him. This is what we saw. Or I can say, hey, this is what we saw in, you know, Tier Tart, who's been a valuable member of our defense that went undrafted. So that's, that's where I think hopefully we can continue uh, to, to excel. Contribute have a, have a hand in the offensive line coach, if I'm not mistaken. When you well, I, you'd have to have an offensive line coach that that supports the offensive coordinator and supports the team. Um, I feel a lot better where where I'm at um, personally, uh, Paul. I think that was my first time. You know, my first time hiring a staff, the first time having an offensive coordinator, and the most important thing is that that person supports the, the coordinator, and I understand that now. So I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I, I know what kind of I'm looking for and kind of what the vision is there. Can you talk about uh, the contributions that Jim Schwartz made during his return engagement here before he got the Browns job? Yeah. You know, uh, it, it was a great fit. It worked out well for us. It worked out well for Jim. He wasn't able to you know, put the time and a commitment that was necessary, and he knew that uh, for him to be a coordinator. Thought he supported uh, Shane and the defense and helped us out, uh, would, would handle some of the red zone stuff, and um, 
you know, I think it was it was it really worked worked well for for both uh, the Titans and Jim. Happy for him. I totally shared all those thoughts with with Kevin when he called, and uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, one, I'm glad he's feeling better, and uh, two, I'm glad he's getting an opportunity to coordinate again. Thanks, guys. Welcome, Rian. Uh,